Hi, I'm Grant Montgomery from Jerns Healthcare. I'm going to spend a few minutes with you discussing the Hoyer HML 400. The HML 400 is a hydraulic patient lift capable of lifting 400 pounds, so up to and including a 400 pound resident. In addition to the video that you're going to watch, we recommend that you review the user manual, operator's manual as well, so that you have a full working understanding of how the HML 400 operates. The HML 400 has a four point cradle, and it's actually got a 360 degree pivot which allows you to approach from the front for chair to bed transfers and likewise from the side for bed to chair transfers or anything else that you were going to do. As I said it's hydraulically operated and you have a hydraulic pump where my left hand is. That pump is actually operable on the left side or on the right side depending on your preference and where you're located in during the lift of the transfer. We recommend that you have that in place prior to beginning the lift or transfer and that's simply operated by pushing down on that handle to raise and then once you've got it to the correct position and are ready to lower, simply turning the dial to lower to the appropriate position, then turning it back when you're done. Back from there, you'll see that there's a spreader bar. The spreader bar is designed to open the base so that you can get around larger objects such as chairs, wheelchairs, anything that may be that way. We also recommend that you open the base for any lifts or transfers that you're going to complete. And we do not recommend that you use the HML 400 as a transportation device. And finally, you'll notice there's a wheel lock on the right rear wheel. This is designed for engaging the wheel lock when you're parking the lift when it's not in service. It's not to be used as a brake, but simply as a lock to lock that caster in place once you're done using the lift. Before we begin our transfer, we're going to make sure that we have the appropriate sling and the appropriate lift. We are working with the HML 400, 400 pound hydraulic lift. And as you can see, I pre-positioned it so the cradle is about chest height for the resident and I've also opened the base so that it'll be easier to, to approach the resident and to ensure that we have a safe transfer. Now the next thing we want to talk about is the universal sling and this universal sling has a label on the side that tells me that this is a medium sling. We want to ensure that we have the proper size because we don't want to use a sling that's either too large or too small for the resident in question. We want to ensure that we have the proper size sling. Each of the slings also has four straps and as I go through the process I'll describe them but there are straps on both sides for the shoulders as well as both legs. Now for convenience I've removed one of the arms of the wheelchair so that it'll make it easier for you to see me fitting the sling appropriately. But in most cases you'll have an arm on both sides of the wheelchair. And I'll approach the resident and tell them the transfer I'm going to do or what the process is going to be. And I will put my right foot between theirs or my left foot between theirs and lean them forward to me. From there I'm going to fit that sling behind the resident, tucking it down until it's in a comfortable position and then pushing them back on top of it. Then I'm going to draw each one of the leg straps down the side. And once I have it down to the resident's side, I'll either prop their foot on top of my foot, or lift, if they can elevate it, lift their leg on top of my leg so that I can slide that leg of that sling underneath appropriately. Now, I'm going to use my hand to move that in place so that we don't create any friction. And once I do that, I'm just going to put the resident's hand there, and I'm going to move the other side. Now, the other thing that's important to know is Depending on the facility's requirements, either one person or two people may be mandated for doing transfers. In this instance, I'm doing the transfer by myself, but depending on facility requirements, you may have two staff members or two people facilitate, facilitating a transfer. Now for the left side, you'll see the same thing again. I'm going to draw that strap down, ensuring that it's in the proper place, and I'm going to either lift the resident's foot up on top of my foot, or their leg up on top of my leg to create that gap so that I can draw the strap down through. I'm going to use the edge of my hand to ensure that it's moving through without friction. Place their leg back. And then from here, I'm going to take these two leg straps, and I'm going to cross one through the other, in this instance, left through right, and draw them down snugly. That's to ensure proper fit for resident safety. I'm also going to make sure that both of my shoulder straps are accessible. And then I'm going to bring my sling up, my, or my lifter up to the resident. And again, we want to ensure the cradle's at about chest height. From here, once we bring it up, we want to make connections with the shoulder straps first and then with the leg straps. And you'll see that there are two different lengths of shoulder strap. And from here, if we use the shorter length, we'll have the resident or patient in a better sitting position. If we use the longer strap, we'll have the resident or patient in more of a reclined position. In this instance, if we were transferring from a chair to a bed, we'd want them reclined so we can line them up in the bed more appropriately. So I'm going to use the longer straps on the shoulder and simply make that connection and likewise on the other side. And after having done so, I'm going to proceed with my leg connections. 
And again, you've got different strap lengths depending on how you want to sit there, position the resident. If you want them more reclined for transfer to a bed, you can use the longer straps. And if you want them uh, more sitting for transfer to a chair, you can use the shorter straps. Or in this instance with the legs, you can use the longer straps as well. After having made my connections, I can simply operate the lift and you can see I've got my hand here. I'm going to make sure that I've got an idea of where the resident is at all times and continue to make my lift until I've lifted them free of the chair. And after having freed them of the wheelchair, I can position them however needed, pivoting them so that we can transfer to a bed. Remove the wheelchair, and then we can complete our transfer by simply wheeling them to the bed, positioning them, and lowering them down. Now I've kept the legs of the base open to allow for a safer transfer. We want to ensure that we clear any wires or anything that might be underneath the bed surface go ahead and position them appropriately. And after having ensured that our resident's in the appropriate place, we can go ahead and turn that dial and lower them. And remove our sling straps. Remove our lifter quickly. and then begin to remove our straps. The way we remove the sling in the bed is simply the reverse of how we applied it, which is uncrossing the leg straps, drawing one side out, <coughs> drawing the other side out, and then simply doing a log roll. If I have a partner, I can roll the resident to me, tuck the top half underneath, roll the resident away from me, and remove the sling. Ensure that the resident is comfortable and in the appropriate position, and then we can go on to our next task. Thank you.